We talked about St. Brown, if you remember, back in August during Hard Knocks. Yeah. And the common theme after every episode on a Wednesday morning was he's unguardable. Yeah. Uh, every time I see him, he's open. Red zone. Third down. Doesn't matter. The Colts couldn't guard him. In the preseason, you couldn't guard him. In practice, you couldn't guard him. To start the season, you couldn't guard him. You couldn't to guard end him. end the season last year, you couldn't guard him. In the parking lot, you couldn't guard him. You I can't. Mean, it, nobody it, it, can <laughs> stop this guy. He is exceptional. Yeah. So my question is, where is he? We had the conversation back in May. He was left off the Pro Football Network's top 32 wide receivers list. Mm-hmm. We argued that he was already a top 20 wide receiver at the time. Yep. This was prior to the year starting. You look today. Where is he? Well, it, it's interesting because you take into account the fact that he missed a game and he played a game and left early. I think he, he got left a, in the first quarter. Yeah, so after basically like two, two games missing from this season compared to other wide receivers. And I'll tell you where he ranks in these stats. And you tell me if he's not a top 10 wide receiver. Right now, with those two games missing, he's tied for ninth in touchdowns. He's tied for seventh in receptions. Two important things for receivers, by the way. 13th in receiving yards. And if he played two games and let's say 150 more yards – he would be top 10 in those stats as well. He's 13th in yards per game. And again, when you look at a wide receiver and how I look at top 10 is consistency and reliability. Amon Ross St. Brown is doing exactly what a number one wide receiver does. And we had this question, remember when he was first drafted or really his rookie season, is he a number one? Is he a number one or is he a number two? Because the comparison coming out was Heinz Ward. That's That was really the general consensus for Amon Ra St. Brown. And what I've been seeing this season with Amon Ra is week in and week out, when he plays, he's the number one vocal point defensively every week, and he still gets open. He still makes plays. That's the job of a number one wide receiver, and Amon Ra's been doing that. So no question, he's a number one. Is he a top ten wide receiver? The stats say so. The eye test says so. And if you watch the game against the Jags, that was an exclamation point on that on that statement. So, yes, I would believe he's either top 10. If you want to say he's top 11, top 12, he ain't top 15. He's better than that. How he's been playing this season. Imagine if he played those two games. Who knows? If I he had a game like the Jags, he'd be even higher. So, yes, Adam, to answer your question, he's a top 10 wide receiver this year. I don't like using words or player comps lightly. But what I'm going to say now is he has qualities of the following players. You tell me if I'm wrong. He has the qualities of a Heinz Ward, a Cooper Cup. He can block. And a little edge of Golden Tate. Yes. He can block effectively like a Heinz Ward and a Cooper Cup could. He is an exceptional route runner like Cooper Cup. Always finds separation. And the speed, the yak, is very reminiscent, of course, of Golden Tate. So... This is a guy right now, he's playing at a top 10 level. You may not want him in your top 10, uh, depending on who you are, what media publication, whatever. It's irrelevant to me. He's playing at a top 10 level right now. He is the de facto number one option on this team. You have to stop him every week. And you know what teams are doing, Jeff? Nothing. (laughs) They can't stop him. No. Jacksonville, who do you circle on this Detroit Lions offense? No question. St. Brown. Yeah. Can't stop him unguardable. He's top 10 right now. 68% of the people agree in the chat. And another point I want to add, too, is Amon Ross St. Brown doesn't fit your typical mold, right? He's not a, a burner. He's not 6'4", 6'5". He's, he's not this big play down the field guy. But you know what he is? He's consistent. And he's reliable. And you're looking at uh, some of these other household names in the NFL. People will bring up Amon Ross St. Brown may not be a household name, but he produces like a household name, or at least he should. And he's, he's getting more eyes. He's getting more attention on him. But I think that's what draws people back at him. Is you, you look at Amon Ra, and yes, people locally know about him, but nationally, you're like, who's this Amon Ra St. Brown guy? Getting 100, you know, uh, 100 plus yards, 11 catches against the Jags. Locally, I think no one would question if he's top 10. But if you go nationally, the name, I think the name brand or having a household name confuses people. But I don't care. I care about production. I care about consistency. And Amon Ross St. Brown does all that. So, and again, the blocking, what he does in the run game doesn't get measured. I I think receivers should be measured on that. How well do you block? And if we're taking Amon Ross St. Brown into consideration, he's one of the best. He really is in the NFL in terms of run blocking. He's nasty. Run blocking. Even a run uh, route running. Yeah, route running as well. Yeah, he's. I mean, come on. Th- this is. They put him on. Wa- they I put know him- he's wearing a Detroit Lions uniform, and I know I'm talking to mostly Detroit Lions fans at the moment. I know you are too, but uh, look. 
you we we need to appreciate players uh, regardless of who they play for for their output. And back in May, we talked about you know why are players like Michael Gallup, Christian Kirk, mm-hmm. uh, Darnell Mooney, why are these guys ahead of a Monra St. Brown who had more catches, more yards, more touchdowns than all of them? Right. This guy had 90 catches last year, and he played half the season realistically. Yeah, yeah. He, Sli- he produced, more than just than half the season. Yeah, he produced for half the season. Yeah, and he like, was on pace. If he played the full season, how we did down the six, seven-game stretch, he would have had 13, 1,400 yards <laughs> receiving. Uh, I mean, what is there a conversation here? <laughs> like, this guy I, is exceptional. All he does is produce. He's very how, – how do I want to describe him? He's very – Quick, and there's not one way to describe this guy. He's exceptional. But regardless of the point, he's on pace for 1,300 yards this year. Yeah. He's on pace for 1,300. He's going to get 100 catches, 13 to 1,400 yards probably, and almost 10 touchdowns. That's a Bl- Close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's a top 100 10. plus receptions, 1,300 plus yards. 10 plus touchdowns. Yep. You are hitting the free agency market and everybody is after you. But then I tell you it's a Monroe St. Brown. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> and I love this, by the way, this comment, Wolversports.com. Ethan Brown says he is why TJ was expendable. And I think that's a great point. Because you have a guy like Amon Ra, and for him to be the vocal point every single week and to be in a situation like he was against Jacksonville, I believe it was the first touchdown. It was, he was a one-on-one situation. Basically, Ben Johnson schemed it up for Amon Ra to be like, you know what, you're on a one-on-one, go beat him. And he did that. That's what, that's what number one wide receivers do, and he's been doing that all year. So, again, I believe he's top ten. Uh, even with the, really, two games he's missed. He missed one game. The other game, he went out early. Um, if he played both those games, stats would be even better. So, I don't think it's a homer take or being biased. I think it's just really the eye test. I have, a, I have the benefit of watching him every single week. So, I know better than most uh, outside of Detroit. But that's the reality, man. What he Let does, me- he's such a complete wide receiver. And think about it when Jamison Williams – gets into the into the flesh. He starts getting into the, the mold, and he starts producing at the rate we think Jameson can produce at. Amon Ross St. Brown. Let me ask you good this. Good luck. Let's go through the list. Good luck. Yes or no questions. Is he better than Tyreek Hill? No. Okay. Better than Justin Jefferson? No. Okay. Stephon Dix? No. Devontae Adams? No. Jalen Waddell? No. That's a toss-up to me because okay. he's having a better year. A.J. But... Brown? N- no. Okay. Terry McLaurin. Now we're getting now we're, now talking. we're getting into some splits Would, here. Because uh, now it's Terry McLaurin, Chris Olave, Tyler Lockett, Amari Cooper, Christian Kirk, DK Metcalf, Garrett Wilson, Mike Evans, Michael Pittman. Amon you, Ross St. Brown is um, higher than all of them in either yards or receptions. And the only one I would make the case for is CeeDee Lamb. It's probably better than him right now. But the problem is Terry McLaurin has the numbers to back him up, Right. right? Right. 62 catches, 945 yards. Right. The only receiver you just named that I would think would be Terry McLaurin and, and CeeDee Lamb. C. D. After Lamb. that, I think Amon Ross better than the field. So I've given you three, four, five, six, seven. I've given you eight wide receivers. You want to throw Higgins or Lockett right now, currently over Amon no, Ross? I would take I Amon Ross over those. I would take him those over guys. Metcalf, Wilson, yes. his fellow yes. rookie, Devontae Smith. Yep. Now, you want to throw Jamar Chase in that conversation? That's fine. I think he's earned that Absolutely. right. Cooper Absolutely. Cup, he's injured. So it depends if you want to use the players that are injured at the moment or have just come back from an injury at DeAndre Hopkins, too. So uh, I don't think a Jalen Waddle, for example, who is top five in receiving yards, is necessarily a top five receiver. Amon Ra, slightly out of the top ten in receiving yards, but he is the de facto one. Right. So when I look at the Lions, when I look at the Dolphins, it's Hill. The Bills, it's Dix. The Raiders, it's Adams. The Eagles, it's Brown. When it's the Lions. You're talking about Amon Ross St. Brown. That's the dude. I think he's the dude. You, if we're, if we're going to actually go through the whole list, if we're honest with each other, I think right now he's playing at a top 10 level, but he probably gets voted out at 11 or 12. Yeah. Realistically. And, and, and again, this is the, the point I was making earlier with the household names because people bring up, you know, what about uh, DeAndre Hopkins or what about a Mike Evans? No, we're talking about this year. 
this year on Mon Rossi and Brown in totality have been better than those guys. So again, uh, DeAndre Hopkins gets like 15 targets a game in Arizona, but he's an incredible wide receiver in a better household name. But we're talking about producing week in and week out. I think Amon Ross well, definitely he's among a, a, some of the better wide receivers in the NFL, and no that's question. a great conversation to be in. So.